This is one of my favorites. This is Jackie with her baby doll. I had Christmas in 1959. Oh, she was adorable. When Jackie was born, she was the happy-go-lucky kid. Jackie loved everybody, and it just emanated from her. She was just wonderful. I met Jackie in high school. We were fast friends. She was my maid of honor, and all we did was laugh. <laughs> she was tons and tons of fun. Jackie longed for a life out west where the sun was warm and anything seemed possible. So at 18, she left for Arizona and soon met her own dream boat, Tom Hawks. Here they come. There's Thomas in all his glory. When she met Tom, you could tell he truly loved her and she was crazy about him. I love it, you. I love you, too. Tom was a probation officer and a uh, bodybuilder. He was a fun-loving guy. <laughs> he was always playing jokes. You're such a bad boy. A oh, bad boy. <laughs> I liked him. He was good to my daughter. Now the bride. They had a Hawaiian-themed wedding at their house in Arizona. There were hundreds of people there. Jackie, she was gorgeous. Pretty faithful husband, as long as you're both still in. I do. Jackie, you take this man to be away with husband. Matt and Ryan are Tom's boys from when he was married before. She loved his kids. Jackie always wanted to be a mother, but uh, she could never have children. She accepted it, and here is this man with two children. It turned out great. Jackie and Tom, they had a very busy life. They were entrepreneurs. They went and bought this 65-foot boat. It was beautiful. It was all teak, and they named it the Well-Deserved because they had saved so long for it. They both retired early so they could live on their boat in Newport Beach. Tom originally was from California, and they liked Orange County. It's like a rich man's paradise. Skyler produced the paperwork that documented the sale of the well-deserved to them. It appeared to be legitimate. It had a price. It was notarized. It was witnessed. Fingerprints were applied. Skyler told me that he had the cash, which was in a large briefcase, three quarters of a million dollars, and that he simply slid this briefcase across the hood of the car, and that Tom Hawks had opened it up and appeared very nervous but excited. Both Tom and Jackie entered their vehicle with this three-quarter million dollars in cash and drove away in their Honda, and that that was the last time that uh, Skylar and Jennifer had seen the Hawks. I confronted Skylar. I go, you're a young man, and that's quite a lot of money. How is it that you were able to afford this? Skylar told me he was a child actor and also dabbled in real estate in Mexico. I started pressing Skylar because this wasn't ringing true. If he legitimately had this much wealth, why isn't he living in his own residence? Skylar took a pause and said he had wanted to come clean, said that the money that he used to purchase the Hawks vessel, the well-deserved, was money that he had earned from the sale of narcotics. Dave Byington is uh, very quick-witted. He doesn't miss a thing. He's kind of the quintessential detective. I chose law enforcement. It's in the family. Both my uncles, one was a Los Angeles police officer. My other uh, uncle was a, uh, a chief for the Los Angeles City Park Rangers. I remember I was in Los Angeles at my grandmother's house. And I was probably six or seven years old during the first riots in the early 60s. And in the middle of the night, I hear you know, the door knocking. And I get up and I look down, and it's my uncle and three other uniformed officers, and they looked tired, disheveled. My grandmother got up in the middle of the night and made them a pot of beans, some burritos, fed them. They had been out for two nights straight, no food, in the riots, and then they get back in their police unit and drive back to the war, and I said, that that's what I'm gonna do. 
choosing law enforcement, there's no doubt I made the right decision. In fact, uh, as a 16-year-old, I happened to get arrested for drunk in public in Newport Beach. I got hired very young at, at 20 years old in Los Angeles County, and so uh, once I had been a police officer for a few years, I figured I'd go seek my revenge on them. So I went and applied and got hired as a lateral transfer and uh, started in Newport in 1981 and uh, had about a 30-year career, and I loved it. There was a, a show that I was on two different times where I was given the nickname of Evidence Whisperer. And I think that's just because I worked cold cases for about nine, eight, nine years. And I was given free range to do whatever I wanted to do to try to solve cases. And I developed a, uh, a way of looking at things that really gets into minutia details that actually shows the truth, whether guilt or innocence and it became really powerful and we solved one particular case where a girl disappeared and been gone for about eight or nine years. I was able to work that case for about three years and figured out who it was and I think that's where that came from just because I got that opportunity which hardly anybody gets that kind of opportunity to work cases to the nth degree and with looking at them to the nth degree you can find evidence that you wouldn't find otherwise and so I think that's where that came from. Jackie always wanted to be a mother, but uh, she could never have children. Yes, it was very sad. Uh, Jackie and her first husband were in a car accident. He died instantly, and Jackie, her pelvis was uh, twisted, and her leg was very badly mangled. Uh, she spent a month or more in the hospital, then she went through a lot of surgeries and plastic surgery and she came back here by airplane. We took care of her. I dressed her leg for over a month or two until it healed enough for her to go back to Arizona. It was very hard, but we managed. She knew then she would never be able to have a child. So it was sad because she wanted something so bad. She accepted it. She walked pretty normal for what she'd been through. She's been through a lot in her life, really. She's just a brave person, that's all.